Hey guys, Caitlin with Gravel here. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about what I think is the best, most compact travel camera that you can get for under $1,000. Actually, this one, under $600. We're talking about the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. When I think about what constitutes something as a good travel camera, I'm thinking lightweight, I'm thinking something that's really versatile and of course has really, really good quality. This camera, for as small as it is, surprisingly contains all of those factors, surely not going to weigh you down. It's also so small that you're able to just pull it out of your pocket and start shooting and for me, that's massive. So I've always kind of lived by this rule and it is whatever camera you use the most is the best camera that you own. So if that's your iPhone, your Osmo Pocket 3 or your FX3, it's better because you actually use it. Also, sorry, it's gonna be windy this entire video. So when you're traveling, you're already facing quite a lot of obstacles like knowing where to go or where you're gonna be driving to or staying. And if pulling a camera out of your bag adds another obstacle to your travels, you most likely aren't going to enjoy the process of shooting video or photo. And the Osmo Pocket 3 for me kind of completely kills all obstacles because of how small it is and easy to just pull out and start using. So another really, really cool feature about this camera is that you're getting an incredible battery life. I've gotten well over two hours on this thing, as well as you're able to just plug a USB-C charging brick into it and you'll get almost a full charge in about 20 minutes. So if you're transporting from place to place, you just throw the battery charger in your backpack and then you're literally good to go. I keep the handle that they provide. I just always keep it on. Um, and this is so that you're able to plug a USB-C into here. Um, but it also just gives your hand like a more, you know, comfortable grip. And then if you want to take it off, you just pop it out and it unclips with the USB-C. This is not the battery extender. That is a longer handle, which personally, the battery performance has been amazing. I've filmed all day, multiple days on it, and I haven't had to charge it. And then it charges so fast that I honestly don't know if that battery handle is really needed, but it's, it's up to you in your use case. Another thing that I love is that they thought to make a wide angle lens, which is perfect for vlogging. The 20 millimeters definitely works for logging, vlogging. It's what you're looking at right now. But if you want, you can go ahead and put the magnetic 15 millimeter wide angle on there. And it's even better for vlogging and seeing everything you need to see. One thing you should always consider while buying a new camera is data management. So if you are buying a camera for the sake of travel, I highly do not recommend cameras that create massive file types. Now, I used to own the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, which if you know anything about that camera, like a five minute file could be, depending on which thing you film on, on which codec, it could be like 50 gigabytes, which, which means your SSDs are filling up very fast, which means you're gonna have to carry more hard drives with you. One thing I love about the Osmo Pocket 3 is because of its one inch sensor that it's filming off of, you're getting very small files, but they are an incredibly sharp 4K file type. That honestly blows my mind. With that said, the maximum SD card that you can put inside here is a 512 gigabyte, which I'm telling you will last you a very, 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 very long time. So some fun stats, you're getting a one inch sensor, you're getting 10 bit D-log footage, which colors extremely nicely and easily, but you're also able to make this camera literally look like a cinematic camera. The three gimbal modes on this camera are gonna be follow, tilt locked, and FPV. My always go-to is gonna be the follow mode as it just obviously follows your movement and doesn't make anything too confusing. One of my favorite things about this camera is that it was not designed nor does it look like an action camera because anytime I've ever shot anything on those, it just never seems to get used. I can connect my DJI wireless mics to the camera. Now I own the DJI Mic 1 not the mic two, and the mic one doesn't have Bluetooth inside of the mic apparently. So I do have to connect the receiver to the Osmo Pocket 3, but if I were to upgrade to the twos, then I'd be able to go direct just from the mic to the camera. Another really impressive feature that kind of shocked me was the hyperlapse mode, and I never really saw myself using that, but travel is a great time to actually create hyperlapses. here so 
I hope you guys can hear me well. But basically, one thing I will say that honestly blew my mind is I love that there's the Pro Mist filter, there's a wide angle lens, and there's ND filters. Because that allows you to really use this camera to its absolute peak abilities. And the Pro Mist filter is just a nice added touch. Of course, you have a ton of other filters that brands have kindly made for you to be able to use on the Osmo Pocket 3. Um, but those are the three that I've used. And another thing I'll add is I love that they integrated inside of the case for these filters to fit in your case. It's such a travel move. I feel like one thing that really needs to be discussed and also loved of DJI is their innovation. You know, even if you think about the DJI mics, the wireless mics, now they're onto the DJI Mic 2. When you think about Rode, Rode Mic, they came out with basically the same exact thing right before DJI did. And if you look at it, it just feels like they didn't do as much thinking towards the innovation of the product. You know, they didn't think to create a case that also simultaneously holds them and charges them through a USB-C output on the back. Rode didn't think of that. Instead, you had to have three USB-C separate cables to charge the transmitter and the receiver. So for me, when DJI came out with, you know, the mics, I just thought, this is so awesome. And then integrating those products together with the Osmo Pocket 3, you can use them simultaneously or you can use them separately. Like right now I'm using this mic to my FX3, but I'm able to then plug that receiver into here. DJI, another win. So what really matters is what you're using this camera for. Now, of course, people are going to argue that you could just buy a vlogging camera that's in Sony's lineup and have the ability to actually change lenses and you could build out a whole lens kit, which of course is totally useful. And I shoot on an FX3, so I totally am not saying don't do that. But what I am saying is that the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 allows you to do stuff that the FX3 and any other bigger cameras are gonna kind of keep you from doing, which is when you're walking through a crowd, when you're traveling, carrying this in your fanny pack or just like a really small bag that's on your body allows you to capture moments every single minute and you don't have that excuse of not pulling your camera out because you didn't want to be seen with a big camera in public. And also, um, just this casual symbol behind us, no biggie. One thing that's honestly mind blowing about this camera is the low light performance. I, it, it really just continually makes me wonder like, do I need to bring my FX3? Maybe I don't because the footage, which you're watching right now, looks incredible. And 4K, 10 bit, low light, very little noise. And then if you film in D-Log, you're able to really, really work with the colors. So I'm so impressed yet again. I had the DJI Pocket 1 and I used it more than I ever thought I would. And with a 3, it's been the exact same way. It's just that the quality and tech has gone up so much that I'm actually shocked. And I left my FX3 at home for most days of the trip because I knew that I could count on this little beast. Another really clutch feature is this two inch screen that you'll see on the back. You're able to see everything, no worries, no problems. I also, of course, love that you can go like this and film vertically. You just click continue instead of letting it turn off. And these are, again, little innovation points that DJI is thinking of and other brands are just skimming by. So like anything in life, it's a matter of if this is actually going to be purposeful for your setup. For me, it absolutely is. And I find myself filming way more than I did before. For travel, I think it could literally be argued that this camera can and will suffice most people's needs unless you're shooting professional work. Once you get into the professional category, of course you wanna have you know a full-size camera to rely on. But until then, I think this is something that really covers all the bases. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it was useful for you to decide if you're gonna purchase the Osmo 3 or if you're not. You know, I don't really mind, but I just wanted to share basically how I feel this camera totally meets the need of travelers specifically. If you have any thoughts, make sure you comment them below and make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you're not already, we'd love for you to be a part of the community. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.